Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of God's treasured ones. You're not clapping like you believe you are treasured by the supreme ruler of the universe. So say this to yourself. I am God's treasured position. I am deeply loved by God. Turn to your neighbor and someone that's our neighbor. Say neighbor. Embrace the love of God. God loves you. Hallelujah. Don't celebrate the love of God. Today I came as a messenger of love from the one who is love to remind you that God is committed to loving you eternally. I've not had my message changed before, but yesterday he changed it. And I, my only understanding is that there is somebody sitting here or listening to me or that will listen that God wants to communicate to and encourage and remind that I, your father, I am committed to loving you. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8a. Love never fails. Next week, we'll take the full, the full part of it. That's what King James says, NKJV. Amplified says, love never fails. Never fades out. It doesn't become obsolete and love never comes to an end. Our focus today is love never fails. If you're someone that learns like me, you're probably asking, is there such a thing as a love that never fails? <laughs> the Greek word translated fails in whether you are with the King James, the NKJV, Amplified or NIV, generally means to fall off, to fall from, to fall away to fall into ruin, to lose authority, to come under condemnation, to forfeit, to fail, or to become ineffective. So in saying love never fails, the Apostle Paul is stating that there is a love that never falls, it never loses, never disappoints, doesn't become ineffective, and is always reliable and constant forever. Now, that is actually where the problem is because we are all witnesses to the fact that love fails. Love loses. Love disappoints. Love falters. And according to our popular phrase, love is never enough. From parents who were never there when we needed them to friends who said one thing before us and a million things behind us to spouses whose love vows did not survive the night we have well-documented proofs that love fails. Some of us have suffered so much disappointment at the hands of the people who claimed to love us that against the backdrop of our experiences, this statement is absolutely contradictory. It doesn't add up. Some of us are still nursing the wounds we sustained from one loving relationship or the other. That every time we read about the love of God in the Bible or someone tells us, like I just did, that God loves us, we become instantly suspicious and our guardrails get activated because we don't want to be disappointed again. So what is the Apostle Paul talking about when he boldly declares that love never fails? Because the love we know, the love I know, the love you have known, the love that is available in this world does fail. The love this world knows do fail. What kind of love? What, what is Paul talking about? I believe he's talking about, he's referring to the eternal love of God. The faithful love of God never fails. It is a love you and I can rely on. One that will never let us down. That's why God could say in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. It's an awareness we need to wake up into. In other words, this is God who is love saying, I am love and I will never stop loving you. Why? Love never stops loving. 
The eternal love of God never fails. It is sure. It is steadfast. It is endless and assuring. It is unchanging and unfading. It is empowering and comforting. And unless we come alive in that awareness that we are loved by God, and we are loved with an everlasting love, we will not experience His comforting, assuring, this, this life-changing, unfading, endless, boundless love of God. Now, it is on this basis, Paul having understood and having experienced, not just a mental a mental understanding, but having had a personal experience and encounter with the love of God that he declared in Romans chapter 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God. The faithful love of God never ends. His mercies endures forever. His mercies never ceases. Jeremiah understood this. And when God was speaking through the prophet Isaiah, he said, for the mountains may move and the hills disappear. But even then, my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken. And then he ended it by saying, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Just in case your guilt is telling you you don't qualify. Just in case your past is telling you he's not talking to you. Just in case your mistakes are telling you that is not for you. He, added, he ended by saying, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Love never fails because if love were to fail, it would mean one thing, that God has failed. Because John tells us that God is love. God is eternal. He loves us with an eternal love. Love is eternal. Today I have been sent to encourage you to stop suspecting the love of God for you. Stop doubting the love God has for you. Stop condemning yourself and listening to the lies of the evil one. The love of God is not like the love of man. It's not like the love of your father. It's not like the love of your husband or wife. It's not like the love of your child. It's not like any love that you can find here. He loves you with an everlasting love. It is love that made him to give an only child to come and die so we can be children. I'm a parent. I would do literally anything humanly possible to preserve the life of any of my children. And yet, he had one. And willingly, freely, lovingly, for your sake, gave that one so you could have access to him, so you could become his own. So stop condemning yourself. The love of God is not like what you've always known. It's not like what you've ever known. Love from God's perspective is different from love from the world's perspective. Did you even know that there is a reward for hoping on the love of God. That God has a special reward for you believing that he loves you. The Bible says the Lord delights in those who fear him. Who puts their hope in his unfailing love. When you understand the word delight, it's saying that God takes pleasure in. God sets his affection on. God enjoys you. God treasures you. God finds you pleasing. And is satisfied just because you trust his faithful love. Because when all else fails, when every support system is gone, when everyone walks out of your love, of your life, you are sure of one thing. The love of God will still be there, standing firm, standing strong. So every time you doubt the, the, you doubt the unfailing love of God for you, what you do is that you rob him. You rob yourself of his favor and his comfort. Every time you doubt that that's which has been spoken is not for you because your sins are too great, because your mistakes are too great, because you're in such a dark place, you literally take yourself away from what has, from a gift that has your name on it. God's loyal love doesn't run out. His merciful love doesn't dry up. Lamentation said they are created every morning. They are created new every morning. This season is about the celebration of the love that never fails. Love came down as, a, as the free gift of the Father. So ordinary men and women like us would not only be recipients of that love, but would become conduits through which God's love will overflow to our spheres. But we cannot give what we do not have. So today is about you making a decision to stick with God, to open your heart to His love, to embrace His love and to let that love flow through you freely to those that are in your sphere. 
So if you are listening to me now and you're feeling overwhelmed, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know what I've gone through. She doesn't know how heartbroken I am. You're feeling lost. You're feeling anxious. You don't know where the next meal is coming from. You don't know where you're going to go to because the landlord has given you 24 hours to pack. And in this whole wide world, you don't have any relative. You're feeling lonely. You're feeling confused. Where do I go from here? He has said, when I get to the crossroad, I'll hear a voice in my ear saying, this is the way. I've been at this crossroad for too long and there is no voice. If you're feeling disheartened, you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling depressed or, wor or worst, you're feeling that you are not worthy of love. If that is you, I came to tell you today that God loves you deeply and his love never fails so don't let the circumstances of love of life convince you otherwise no matter how much you have strayed from him no matter how far you feel you are from God no matter where you are right now know that the love of God is there with you God loves you and he still wants a relationship with you if you must run then run towards him don't run away from him. Because that's what the devil is trying to do. All the things that are climbing down on you is because he wants you to run. So if you must run, run in one direction, towards the father. Because his arms are waiting. Remember the prodigal son and the father. He, he had strayed away, but he did not stop the father's love for him. The more he went farther away, the father still loved him, but the father had to wait for him to turn back in that direction. The moment he came in, in, he turned back to the father, the father ran towards him. The father is waiting for you with his arms of love open. Don't let the world tell you otherwise. Don't let anything isolate you from him. You don't need to put yourself together before you come to him. Come as you are. He's a specialist in putting people back together again. That's why he's called the porter. His love never fails. As you rise this morning and we make our confessions, I want you to keep that in mind and allow your heart to be opened to the love that the Holy Spirit is pouring into your heart. Because he needs you. God wants you to walk away from this service today convinced, aware, and alert to the fact that his love never fails and that you not us but you individually personally you his love has your name on it personally he loves you with an eternal love his love you'll never run out his love you'll never dry up his love you'll never fall rise and let's take our conf confession this morning say with me this morning i am begotten of god to embrace love I am loved with an everlasting love. Say it to yourself. Say it like you are awakening your spirit. You are waking up something in you to come alive to understand that I'm not alone. Say, I am begotten of God to embrace love. I am loved with an everlasting love. His love is not dependent on my abilities or inabilities. I am not deserving of the boundless love of God. Yet, he loves me. The love, the God of all the earth is in love with me personally. His love for me will never fail or come to an end. I am a trusted conduit of God's faithful love. His love flows from me to others. Daily, I am being transformed by the love of God. His love has the first and the last say in everything I do. I choose to live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ. I am becoming a person who patiently bears with others. My life is a beautiful display of the love of God. I am infinitely and unconditionally loved by God. 
His love empowers me to love others the way He loves me. I am not afraid. The perfect love of God has expelled all my fears. God is always with me. I know I am never alone even when I feel lonely. I am surrounded and kept safe by the love of God. My life is filled with inexplicable joy and blessings. I am controlled by the love of God. His love has taken hold of my heart. Today I am gladly rejoicing in God's unfailing love. For he cares deeply for me. God will never let me down. As his great love cannot fail. My life is moving from glory to glory. From strength to strength. No circumstance is strong enough to separate me from the love of Christ. No trouble or adversity can threaten or convince me otherwise. I am confident in the knowledge that I, in a Patrick Grace Henry, am deeply loved by God. Say that last line like a minute. I am confident in the knowledge that I, in any Patrick Grace Henry, am deeply loved by God. Say it for the last time. I am confident in the knowledge that I, in any Patrick Grace Henry, am deeply loved by God. I want you to just raise your hands and say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Today we just came to celebrate the love of the Father. The unfailing love of the Father. The unending love of the Father. The boundless love of the Father. The assuring love of the Father.